Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the lecture of uh, chapter 9 and part 2. Uh, in chapter 9 we are talking about waste stabilization ponds and uh, in part 2 specifically we will discuss the design of uh, WSPs. Okay, now regarding the design we have to consider two components the design of facultative ponds and the design of maturation ponds so let's start with the design of facultative ponds first of all we have to calculate the surface BOD loading which is how many kilograms how many kilograms of organic matter is applied for each hectare per day and this is represented as lambda s as you can see here in this equation lambda s equals 10 li times q over a f li is the original bod or the raw bod of wastewater i mean the bod received to the in the facultative ponds q is the flow and a is the uh, area of facultative ponds okay now there is a permissible BOD loading which is the lambda s maximum okay and this equation uh, gives us the maximum lambda s that can the uh, facultative pond receive equals 350 times 10 I mean 1.107 minus 0 0.002 times T and T is the temperature T is the temperature imagine that the T is 25 Okay, temperature is 25 so that will make the lambda s maximum is 350 only if the temperature is higher than 25 so lambda s maximum will be higher than 350 which means that uh, the higher the temperature the better the efficiency or the higher the efficiency of uh, the facultative ponds and that gives an indication that uh, these our or this system or the system of WSP is more efficient in the higher temperature areas or higher temperature countries okay now once we have a suitable value of the lambda s the bond area can be calculated from the equation of the retention type okay and the retention time equals AF times D over Q. D is the depth of the pond. And we said before that the depth is uh, around 2 meters, something like that. Okay, over Q. Okay, and then we will come to the maturation ponds, the design of maturation ponds. And first of all, in maturation ponds, as we discussed in part one, the primary or the, uh, the major uh, function is to remove the, uh, the fecal bacteria, okay? And we call it the fecal coliform. So the fecal coliform can be modeled using this equation, okay? N E equals N I over one plus K T times T. NE is the number of fecal coliform per 100 ml of the effluent. NI is the number of the uh, fecal coliform in the influent. And KT is the first order rate constant. I mean, the decay rate of the, uh, of the fecal coliform per day. And T small is the retention time. So, if we have a series of facultative ponds and maturation ponds and that's normally what happens in reality so the equation will be uh, modified to equation 9.5 as you can see here equation 9.5 is uh, NE equals NI and NE, NI refers to the number of fecal coliform okay before and after treatment 1 plus KT times TF Okay, times 1 plus kt t n over n n small is the number of is the number of maturation ponds okay and k is the decay factor 
at t uh, first we we see what is tf tf is the retention time in the facultative pond and tm is the retention time in the maturation pond so we have two values of t okay don't mix up uh, between them we have tf is the facultative part f tm is the maturation part okay but k is the same k is the same okay and k or kt this is uh, as we said it is uh, it is highly uh, temperature dependent so it has to be adjusted if the temperature is different than uh, than normal and kt can be adjusted if temperature is different than 20 otherwise it has to be or it will be taken as 2.6 okay now we have to check the BOD and the effluent does it meet the requirements or not so we can check using this equation LE the BOD and the effluent equals LI the BOD and the effluent over K1T plus 1 K1 is the rate constant for the BOD removal don't mix up between K1 and KT okay K1 and KT K1 is for the BOD removal per day okay times T which is the retention time plus 1 so here we can check the BOD effluent concentration and then we can calculate or uh, sorry here we have also to adjust the value of K1 okay so we have two adjustment equation for the k values we have adjustment for kt and we have adjustment for k1 adjustment for k1 is as we uh, can see here an adjustment of kt as we saw in the previous slides okay so uh, this is regarding the, uh, the facultative and maturation ponds so for for n ponds in series of course, the BOD effluent can be calculated as follows. The same, we adjust the, the, the equation of fecal coliform removal. We also modify the equation of uh, BOD removal uh, because normally we use a series of ponds, a series of ponds. Okay, and the same values or the same parameters are applied here. Okay, let's have an example. Uh, we want to design a waste stabilization pond to treat 10,000 meter cubic per day of wastewater which has a BOD of 150 milligram per liter and 1 times 10 to the power 8 fecal coliform per 100 ml. So the effluent should contain no more than 5,000 fecal coliform per 100 ml. So this is a requirement. Okay, this is a requirement and 20 milligram per liter of BOD this is another requirement for BOD and design temperature is 28 degrees so let's have a look here we have 10,000 uh, milligram per liter uh, sorry 10,000 meter cubic per day this is Q the BOD of the influent is 150 so this is LI and the fecal coliform in the influent is 1 times 10 to the power 8 okay uh, so this is n i okay n for netherlands and the effluent should contain no more than 5000 so this is n e and um, the bod should not be more than 20 so this is l e okay First of all, let's check for the facultative ponds. Check the design loading, the lambda s. Lambda s according to, to the temperature is 28. So we just apply the equation. So we have here lambda s or the maximum number of the maximum loading of uh, can be loaded to the facultative ponds. How many kilograms of BOD? Okay, how many kilograms of the organic matter? So the lambda s equals 406 kilogram per hectare day and then we can calculate the area so the area equals 10 
times li q over lambda s equals uh, 36946 meter square okay simply and we can just calculate the uh, the retention time here we have to assume the depth between 1.5 to 2 meter so we take it as 1.5 meter so that makes the tf is 5.5 days okay so the retention time is 5.5 days then we move to the maturation points maturation points we have to uh, adjust or calculate for the fecal coliform removal so first we have to adjust the value of k kt so kt after adjustment equals 10.46 per day okay then we apply the value of uh, of the fecal coliform removal so here the fecal coliform removal we have the value of ne we have the value of ni and we have the value of all these parameters so kt is adjusted just now and tf is the retention time in the facultative ponds tm is the retention time in the maturation ponds is taken as, as three days and this is assumed this is assumed okay and n small this power is the number of maturation ponds but we yet don't know i mean until now we don't know how many uh ponds we have to apply how many maturation ponds we have to apply so here we will make it as trial and error okay sorry so tm is three days so for trial and error uh we put n equals one and then we check ne we substitute n as 1 okay take n equals 1 and see how much the ne equals if n equals 1 so the ne is 52765 and if this value is more than the required value of ne because in the in the question just now it is required that the final fecal coliform is not more than 5000 but here is more than 5000 which means that one maturation point is not enough okay so take n equals 2 so that makes the ne equals 1630 which is less than 5000 that means the n equals 2 is okay and we can apply two maturation points okay two maturation points now for a depth of 1.5 meter the area of maturation point can be calculated from this equation okay q times tm over d and the area equals 20,000 meters square is this the area of one maturation point or two maturation points actually don't be confused this is an area of one maturation point why because the maturation points are applied in series not in parallel okay they are they have to be constructed in series so this q okay this q is received in one maturation point then the same q will be received in the second maturation point because they are in series so the area is for one maturation point not for two maturation points now let's check for the b or d removal for facultative and maturation points okay because we know that bod removal is uh is achieved in both but majorly it is in the facultative points but at the end we will measure the bod removal after the whole process okay now the k k1 i mean the the rate constant for bod removal has to be adjusted 0 0.3 times 1.05 over 28 minus 20 
because the temperature is different so that adjusted the k1 to be 0 0.44 okay we move to, to this equation of bod removal okay we have to check the bod removal if we apply n equals 1 how much the le then we apply n equals uh, 2 how much the le but we already have the value of n we already have the value of of n which is 2 so that makes we just apply it directly n equals 2 and we check the BOD removal after we apply all the values so that makes the BOD, BOD removed or the final BOD is 8.15 and here notice that here is K1 not KT okay so don't mix up the K apply here applied here is K one which is 0 0.44 but in the previous uh, equation in previous slides the k was kt okay so uh, don't mix up because uh, we have seen so many cases that students mix up between k1 and kt and they uh, uh, make so many mistakes okay so uh, that is the end of uh, of this chapter and uh, I hope you uh, you enjoy this chapter and you enjoy this this lesson. If you got any question, don't hesitate to to put in the comments or to just uh, message me through WhatsApp. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.